also Don he has here a 1965 Plymouth. Talk to us a little bit about that, because I know that car has also some neat history. It has a lot of good history, too. And, of course, that car originally was bought by uh, Arlen Vanke out of Akron, Ohio. And in, that's one of the 16 four-speed cars that Chrysler built. They built 50, but 16 of them were four-speed cars. And out of those, there's only four of those known to exist. Wow. And, of course, this car, because of the history of Arlen Vanke and, again, with Ed Miller, it is the best known of those cars left. Uh, Ed Miller won the World Championship in 67 at Tulsa, the final meet of the year. He beat Bill Jenkins in his Camaro. Oh, uh, was it his Camaro? Yeah, to, to win a World Championship. Wow. And he also won the first $10,000 check from Hearst for, by winning Division I uh, in that year, 67. And that was a lot of money back then. That was a lot of that. money back then, yeah. So the car has a lot of good history. And again, it's the same way. It's back the way it was in 67. And now, if you notice, it's got the uh, stall front runner tires, which I think is just <laughs> yeah. awesome. Just to, the attention to detail with that car, what you have. Well, Jerry Stahl had those tires built. Uh, they, they only lasted three years in selling tires. So you find those tires today, it's pretty rare. Absolutely. But that car has original wheels and tires on it from, from 67. No kidding. Yes. I had them all taken apart, the wheels. You have to cut the back, the weld, take them apart, chrome them, and then weld them back together. No way. So that's how those wheels That's why done. they look so nice. That's why they look so dark. No yeah. kidding. The center of those front wheels, not steel, it's magnesium. Oh, really? Yeah, to make them lighter. They're three and a half pounds lighter than a regular Krager wheel. No kidding. Yeah. And Ford did the same thing with the Kovacek cars in 68. Oh, yeah. Used the magnesium centers. And we've seen a couple of Don's <laughs> four of his uh, 68 Cobra yeah, tests, yeah. which, which are outstanding. Those are little things the public never knew. All right. oh, these guys saved weight in front of these cars. That's three and a half pounds off each wheel by making that center magnesium. Man, that's amazing. That's amazing. Three and a half yeah. pounds. And now that Hemi, what compression is that motor? 13 and a half to one. 13 and a half to one. 456. 456 gears. 456 gears. Wow. Yeah. 456 gears. Man. And how long have you had that car? Since 95. 95. I bought these both the same, same year. No kidding. Yeah. Well, 1995 was a good year. A good year. <laughs> good year for the collection. Yeah, that yeah. was boy, awesome. That is really cool. And then uh, it's lettered up just the way it was. There's a bunch of pictures and stuff you have. I mean, it, like you said, it's exactly, exactly the way it how was. you see it. And that's all hand lettered. It's not decaled. It's all hand lettered. Yeah, that's painted on. Lettered. Yes. Which is a talent itself. It's a talent itself. Now, I, I heard or, or read a rumor online, which is a great rumor for me, is they're going to make that a 118th scale model towards the end of the year? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. So you, That'll you, be cool. You can't buy Don's, but you can go out and buy your own 118th scale <laughs> model, as well as uh, Bud Fobbles. Bud Fobbles. He's got the 64 uh, Hemi Honker on there. And here's a special treat as Don gives Ed Miller a few reminders of how to fire up the old 65 Hemi as Ed thrills the crowd with the Crackle Fest at the York Muscle Car Reunion Show. Very implicit direction. I really am not teasing, joking.
chance to gather around standing with the 1967 Super Stock World Champion, Ed Miller. Ed, thanks for uh, spending a little time with us. I want to talk about uh, your 65 A990. What did the boys think when you won that crown and you had a, a 65 Hemi and when you won it in 67? Well, Chrysler guys were happy that Mopar won it instead of a new Chevy. They were yeah. having an old Mopar win and a new Chevy. Oh so. yeah, for sure. But you know, they liked the new cars, you know, to win, but it yeah. just didn't work out that way for them. Yeah. So. And then you were kind of hunting down uh, Bill Grumpy Jenkins. You guys were kind of going back and forth all year. Yeah, and then the division, uh, yeah. and for the division points. Yeah, I beat him at the last divisional race and won the division championship. And then I beat him in the semifinal at the world finals and won that race. So. Yeah, you had a great year yeah, in 67. Yeah, it was good. It was good. So then you bought the car from Arlen Banky out of right. Akron, Ohio. Yeah, I bought it in, in uh, 66. 66. Yeah. And then did you just, what did you do to the car or anything? Or how did you get it? Uh, up to world champion status. Well, a lot of work on it. Uh, different camshaft after a while. Uh, they came out with a new cam and uh, that. And just in 67, they went to the bigger tires, so that helped a lot because we were on a seven inch tires in 66. So okay. that was kind of hard, but sure. It was a lot better when we get the bigger tire and a Dana rear end, too. So okay. beefed it up 66 a little. had eight and three quarter in it and had a lot of problem with axles. So okay. that was, it was good. So then also, uh, your mechanic, uh, so thanks so much, we really appreciate it. Oh, you're it. welcome. Appreciate you being interested in the car. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Kip. Kip Gunther, yeah. uh, he won the Master Mechanic Award that year right. as well, right? Right, that's right. So then you guys kind of both final. worked on that together and traveled the country oh, yeah. and raced that. Yeah. Yeah, he helped a lot at the races and kept things going. And I worked on the car during the week as he had another job. And I worked as a bricklayer, so I had a lot of time off. So oh, OK. I could take off when I wanted to. and. They, I didn't, they didn't pay me when I wasn't there, so they didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't care, so you're out yeah. racing. Yeah. And uh, it was a good thing you were because at that time, you got the, the largest purse check from George Hurst right. of $10,000. Yeah. So that had to be pretty and exhilarating. 10000 on top of everything else. Wow. For the race, yeah. That was yeah, a pretty was, nice. It was the uh, biggest purse in drag racing at that time. Sure. And yeah, Garlis told me a few years ago at one of his shows that he, he only got about 3000 at Indy for winning top fuel. No he kidding. Said that, he said that was a real big deal, a $10,000 oh. deal from Hurst. Absolutely. Yeah, that was a big deal. And then you also won uh, the Hot Rod Magazine, <coughs> did 10 drivers or top 10. You also got that honor yeah, then that year. Top 10, yeah. Top 10 Hot drivers. Top 10. Yeah, that's amazing. Yep. And then you're still building motors today with your uh, Ed Miller Racing Enterprises, right? Yeah, still racing too. Are you? Oh yeah. And then what are you racing now? Well, I was racing a 65 car for the last five years, but I just sold that. And I'm building a replica of my 70 Pro Stock Duster. Oh yeah, okay. Which I'll have out in the fall. Oh, good. I'm excited about that. Yeah, that'll be bring back some memories. Oh yeah. And just here a couple minutes ago, Ed had some memories that were brought back. Uh, you got to, to sit in your old car and kind of start it up a little bit. Yeah, rev it up a little. Yeah, that had to feel good, bring back some memories, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, it sounds good, didn't it? Oh, man, that thing is a ground pounder. Yeah. So what would you uh, bring that out of the hole at when you were racing that? What did you ship yeah, it at? Various times, different, about 5,000, 5,500 to come out and ship about 7,065, somewhere around there. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure that was a seven wild ride. 7-inch tires, though, was lower. I used to come out about 2,500 with a 7-inch tire. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was used to, used to doing that, so I could come out low. Yeah. yeah. It worked good. What horsepower do you think that that actually produced? Oh, uh, yeah, they used to say about 650. 650? Yeah. And then you actually rebuilt the motor that's in the car today right. as it sits here right now. Yeah, a couple years ago. A couple years ago, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it sure looks beautiful, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. A lot better than it was when I had it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were just more worried about going oh, yeah. fast. We just raced. We didn't care about looking like a show car. Now, what color was the car when you bought it from Arlen Banky? It was light brown, tan color. Okay. Yeah. And then you got it uh, lettered up and had yeah, the dealership. Had and, yep. and it's got to be probably a, a pretty good honor as well as uh, you have the little 118 scale model oh, car yeah. of it now. Yeah, so. I came out with that last year, so... Yeah, yeah. That, that was that's real nice. They're really nice models. Yeah, you know the, the car, the way it sits with the Craigers all the way around it, and the way it sounds. Yeah. This is uh, one of the the ultimate muscle cars of its era, and especially with yeah. you you behind the wheel, boy, you proved it. That's <laughs> yeah. for sure. So yeah, it was a good car. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for uh, talking with us, Ed. We appreciate. Uh, 
uh, your history with the car, what you've done with it, and it sure is uh, amazing to see it here uh, today and have you get in it and fire it up a little bit too. Fun. Yeah. Cool. Well, Thanks thank you. All right. Thank you. thank you. Appreciate it. In this next video, you'll see me riding shotgun as Don drives out the historic race car from the York Muscle Car Reunion Show. Drag Racing's biggest purse to date, $16,000 for capturing the Superstock crown. A check from George Hurst accounted for $10,000 of the bounty, which was Hurst's effort to promote interest in the then-new multi-class eliminator format for Superstock that was introduced in 1967. We're here with Akron Arlen Vanke, and uh, we were just kind of talking about the 1965 Plymouth that he bought new that he had sold. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that car and kind of how it ended up where it is today? Yes, I bought two 64 Plymouths, one Hemi and one Wedge, and then when the 65s came out and I saw all the improvements, I immediately bought one of those, and it was delivered to Arnett Chrysler Plymouth on East Market Street in Akron. It was uh, one of the few four-speed cars that they built that year. And uh, it was a very good car for me. And I enjoyed running it and had good luck with it. And I ended up selling it to Ed Miller from Rochester, New York at the time. And now uh, a fellow named Don Fazell owns it. And he had it restored. And whoever did it did a fantastic job. And the car is better than it was new. Yes, it's what the Chrysler called an A990 car, which is cross ram carburation, high compression, and uh, a heavy motor. What's that, probably like 13 and a half from the one compression? Yeah, it was 13 and a half to one. Is that because? And then you raced that at Indy for a little bit and some local tracks where you sold it? I raced it quite a bit at local tracks and did go to the Nationals. And I think I had the, the best time in the class and broke the side cover on the transmission in the second pass. And it wasn't, that wasn't a real lucky car for me, but at least Ed got some of the luck. Now, he won the world finals with it. Now, i got to ask you, what did you ship that Hemi out of coming out of the gate? Uh, you launched the car about uh, 68 to 7,000 and shifted it at uh, low to second at 6,400, second to third, and third to fourth at 7,000. Yeah. Well, that's definitely getting on the track pretty fast. I would like to say thank you to Arlen Vanke and Ed Miller for taking the time to talk to me about their former race car. And an extra special thanks goes out to Don Fizell for always taking the time to share his knowledge on his factory muscle car collection. To end this short film, here is another look at the Superstock World Champion race car.